I'm ready. So you don't have to worry about getting the YouTube thing going. Because oh. uh, we're not we're not YouTubing uh, today for the probably the first time in years, um, maybe ever. Uh, we've not we're not broadcasting out. Um, so appreciate everyone uh, joining us today. Uh, I sent the uh, the agenda along with the summary of last month. I'll kind of uh, take a look at that. Um, one of the reasons we're not broadcasting today, we're we're going to talk about a subject uh, that uh, we just want as much as we can in a virtual setting is uh, have a discussion about it. Um, the discussion we have on cybersecurity, by the way, will not be part. Uh, when we post uh, this webcast, like we always do, the part that we will remove is this, well, I'll consider a closed discussion on cybersecurity, um, what we're going to have to address. Same thing goes with the Go Soapbox questions. We posted those. We would like for you to uh, respond to those. Um, but and once again, in the effort of cybersecurity, once, uh, once this webcast ends, the only ones that we will post are the ones about STLP and the CIO Summit. Anything with cybersecurity, we will not post the results of that that poll question. Um, mainly because we don't want to give those that want to commit cyber crimes um, um, uh, a run and go at us. And so, but we're trying to get kind of a health check internally and, and have a have a discussion. But thanks, thanks for joining us uh, today. Hopefully, this is not your very first webcast with us. Um, um, uh, but if it is, I'm David Couch with the Kentucky Department of Education, um, um, Social Commissioner of Education Technology, and uh, lead the um, education technology effort uh, across state and for a agency. Um, which we have Kentucky School of Deaf and Blind and about 50 area technology centers and plus the um, KD staff itself. Uh, so um, let's talk about something kind of fun. Uh, first, a couple of things uh, fun. Uh, a quick look back at uh, KISTE 2022, which was last, uh, well, for me, I got there on Tuesday night and um, um, stayed all the way from that, uh, every minute of it, all the way to Friday through its closing. Um, just, a, just a tremendous event. Great to be back at that event. Again, made me feel like things are really uh, first time in a long time back back to normal. I, I do want to give a, a hats off um, to all those that participate and help kiss the event happen. Uh, and Jeff, you can relate to this with STLP, with all the volunteers and good folks it takes, um, and talented folks it takes to make those events go. Um, for those that have been around for a while, is that conference uh, used to be called KETC, and that was led uh, by our office. And um, I'm familiar with all it takes to, to put that on, the finances it takes, the people you count on, the tired looks at that front desk uh, and the command post as it gets toward the end of near exhaustion uh, by those that in districts that volunteer to be part of the KISTI team. Um, you know, besides leading what they do for their district, you know, they they volunteer to do that. And and. You know, folks that do that are not doing it for a power play. They're doing it just to make a good opportunity for others. Uh, and that's what you see is um, folks, you know, and I, there's, uh, as my mom always said, no good deed goes unpunished. So I'm sure there's, as you're, as you're doing that great deed, um, there's some times you wish you hadn't. But, uh, you know, uh, Amy Johns, and thanks to everyone uh, that, that, that volunteers and districts to make that happen. Uh, thanks to our staff, those that volunteer. Uh, to give sessions and any kind of role that, that you may play. Um, it was really great in every aspect to be that back, and it was it was really well run, and it really did feel, um, as, as much as I've been to anything the past two years, is, is, is it was back to normal, uh, as, as normal can be in these in these times. So uh, I don't know if anyone else wants to give give some words here, but I do want to give a high five to the KISSI staff. It was, it was wonderful, and I soaked in every moment from – the morning, the breakfast in the morning to the to, to late at night um, uh, with folks. I don't know if you have other comments that folks would like to like to say. I know we talked David. I, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll just quickly shout out the all those who um, presented sessions and the collaboration that went on between just different teams of of folks. I mean, it it truly is a premier education technology event and conference uh, led by a premier. Uh, education technology organization across the country and it the, the content was fantastic i mean the level the depth um of 
what was shared in the uh, concurrent sessions. And also we had uh, the KISTI team brought in some national um, leaders. Um, it, it was just that I, I want to just call out the content. And, and we, we got quickly away from, you know, basic level tool training kinds of sessions and all the way to super deep integration, whether that was technical integration or, or, or instructional learning impact types of depth. And so, um, well, well done, super big high five to everyone. Yep. Okay. Um, I thought the summit, I appreciate those that participate in the summit. We really had a high percentage of districts that uh, persist, participate in that. We do have a go soapbox question um, for you as, as the, you know, the feedback we got, it, it seemed like during the event itself was it was a very good experience and, and um, we hit on some, change, we changed the format a bit to where we didn't have asking so many questions and sub questions. We really focused in on, on a couple within there so folks really can go in depth in the amount of time uh, that we had and uh, my, my observation is is the the depth of the discussions at the tables was great and so we're taking that we're accumulating that we had the report part outs um, but obviously I'm very interested in seeing that all together and I'll read you know every comment and summary that that was made so I appreciate those and the picture that I included in the invitation was from the CIO summit um, so I appreciate all those that once again were able to participate. And we always have, and it, it, it happens, um, uh, those at the last second could not come but wanted to, to be there um, uh, in person. Um, and so that that always happens. We we understand. Um, uh, but you, you de you'll definitely get the benefit of. You will see what the um, we'll share the, the the big points and the summary and the and the, and the common themes that we got. And we asked those those three questions. Uh, also, one of the things that I talked about at the, the, the closing of the summit, um, I gave the CIOs there. So if you weren't at the, the, the KISTI at all, um, or you were just at the CIO summit and didn't stay for the closing, um, or at the closing, not at the opening, but mainly uh, uh, you were at the CIO summit but didn't stay for the closing, I want to share the comments I was, uh, I was able to share during the closing. Um, I had three minutes to share them, and I, uh, I got it down to, to, to three minutes, I believe. I'm going to take a few minutes longer than that uh, now. But I, uh, for those that uh, weren't at the event, is uh, before the CIO Summit, I, uh, I was having breakfast there in the Galt House, and um, a guy named Jerry Prince, who works for KDC, uh, just happened to walk by. And um, um, it's good, good to see Jerry. I've seen him once again in two years, like uh, most of the district folks haven't seen and um, asked him if he had his red suspenders on. And he opened them up and sure enough, he had the red suspenders that we had provided him five years ago for being a Stillwell Award winner. And uh, I saw some other Stillwell Award winners there, by the way, uh, proud, you know, uh, you know, proud of, their, of, their, of that distinction at the, at the KISTI event, it was good to see them. Uh, but the part that was uh, you know, good for, 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 for Jerry and the reason we do that is for those folks that go above and beyond the call of duty, the unsung heroes that very rarely get recognized for all what they do. It, we started that award back in 2008 with Bill Stilwell, uh, and mainly it's the red suspenders because he wore them. That's what he's we, we, he was known for, for wearing. And we always blindsided and surprised any recipient of that, uh, which has uh, been wonderful. But the part for, for Jerry was... Just it was the first time, you know, there's no money that comes with the award. There's no um, anything like that, but it was just a recognition and appreciation and just a thanks, you know, for a job well done going above and beyond the duty for uh, a period of time. It's our way to give a, uh, you know, a, a nice high five uh, to folks. So um, um, I'm going to read off to you what I read um, uh, during the event. So there's still some things we got to work on and how we actually do this. Um, uh, but I'm going to read that for those that that did not did not stay. Um, if you heard you heard it uh, then, I've I've uh, may have missed a word or two because I wrote it down. I was reading off the smartphone, and uh, so uh, it gives me a chance to get get it right this time. Um, like most of all you over the past three days, and then once again I did this on on Friday, have laughed and smiled continuously harder and longer uh, than any time over the past two years. This was just so wonderful and therapeutic. 
thanks to Kisti. And that, that every, every bit of that, every word of that sentence is true. Uh, over the past two years, uh, my peers in the other 49 states met weekly, and they regularly said, Kentucky K-12 Ed Tech is what they strive to be. Our secret sauce in Kentucky K-12 is our relationships with each other in this room. No other state has this. They don't. They only have close to, close to what we have uh, when it comes to relationships. Uh, Kentucky K-12 is the pioneer and the national leader in most aspects of K-12 ed tech. Uh, Amy Johns would not give me 30 more minutes to kind of go describe how that is, um, but I described it's in our timeline in our digital readiness infographic, so we can de definitely back up that uh, back up that statement. Um, uh, the past two years uh, are my proudest of my 30 years at KDE. When the lights were the brightest on Kentucky K-12 ed tech, we all came through. 30 years of teamwork and a solid foundation really paid off in a meaningful way. These past two years have been like 10 years in ed tech years for all of us involved uh, with Kentucky K-12 ed tech. And it most certainly has aged me 10 years, so uh, that, that's for sure. The Bill Stilwell Red Suspender Award is the highest honor that Katie provides in K-12 ed tech. It goes to an individual organization that goes above and beyond the call of duty. And uh, there's, a, there's a link to our side of the Bill Stilwell Award that shows over a long period of time those that, those that have won it. This year, we're doing a special version of the Stillwell Red Suspender Award. Uh, the Kentucky K-12 Education Commissioner, Jason Glass, and he loved he loved this when I discussed this concept with him before announcing it. And I am presenting the 2020 to 2022 Still Stillwell Medal uh, to each of you. Uh, and that I pointed to those that were in the audience. Uh, one of the U.S. Army's most prestigious awards is the Meritorious Service Medal, the MSN. The MSN is the medal that I cherish the most receiving as a military officer for Operation Desert Storm. And it sits, actually sits um, uh, right right there. Um, so it's a pretty big deal to get a meritorious service medal, at least it was, was to me. The Stillwell Medal is our equivalent version of the MSM and will be presented to you for your successful and meritorious tour of duty to your organization, your district, and our state beginning on 10 March, 2020, uh, during the first day of KISTI, uh, of that year and ending on 11 March 2022, the last day of the 2022 KISTI conference. During that time frame, you survived and thrived amongst all the chaos and intensity, but are likely near totally exhausted now. Um, and definitely felt, felt that uh, uh, during the time and, and a relief. So over the next few months, we will identify the specific ways the EdTech teams in your district and organization made a significant and overwhelming difference going far above the call of duty, and we'll communicate this to you, your district and organization leadership, and your board. This medal is to all you CIOs and ed tech leaders, the DTCs, the STCs, the technicians and network admins, digital learning coaches, library media specialists, virtual and remote learning leaders, student staff, data system staff, um, STLP mentors, and our students that played a role, like for example, with our help desk, and our Office of Education Technology staff that helped with the delivery of the Kentucky K-12 Ed Tech service in such an outstanding way during the past 24 months. This special Stillwell Meritorious Service Medal is our heartfelt way to say thank you for what you did and sacrificed over the past two years. You are amazing. And I believe that with, uh, with every uh, beat of my heart. Uh, congratulations. We do hope to see you on 20 April at Rupp Arena for the STLP State Championship. Like the KISTI conference, it's going to be awesome. Take care. And I gave a salute, you know, a good good Army salute to those in the audience, which well-deserved when you get, we get a medal. So it is, um, so let's talk about that. Um, we are going to have our STLP students design the, the uh, Bill Stilwell Red Suspender Meritorious Service Medal that we're going to provide uh, to, to uh, the folks that I mentioned. We're also, and I, I would be interested in, in with your all's input, what is the wording that would be uh, that would make a difference? Because we not just to the individual, but to your your leadership of your district, to your board, because uh, we really want to let them know the things behind the scenes that were done to really make all the magic happen uh, that they are probably not aware of and uh, don't appreciate as much as they probably probably should have. So we'll be interested, really, your input. What kind of words would would make a difference as we're writing that to you? Um, and we're writing that uh, to, to your uh, to the folks that 
you work for or work around. So we'll have, have some fun. We're going to also have a Red Suspenders Day. Uh, we, we, it's been a while since we've done that, and this will be a celebration uh, for all uh, the, 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 the medal winners. And we'll, we'll pick a day in the future, um, maybe even have a, something outside here uh, or someplace to where people, if they want to come in person, they can. If not, they can join, uh, uh, join remotely. Um, and so we're going to have some great fun with that, and hopefully it's done in a very meaningful way. Um, as I said, is um, I got that uh, Meritorious Service Medal many years ago in the early 90s before, right before coming to, to KDE. And uh, like I said, I look at it you know, every, time I, every time I walk in here. So hopefully we're going to do something that is meaningful to you all for your tour duty over the past uh, 24 months. So um, wanted to make sure you're aware of that and, and, uh, and uh, celebrate that. And like I say, we're going to go out of our way to try to make it make it special. And thanks, Jason. Um, 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 everyone, <laughs> as as a lot of folks said, people deserve a medal. Uh, kiddingly, yeah, yeah, you do. And so we're going uh, we're going to provide you one along with along with some writing. So once again, thank you. Let's talk about our next topic, our agenda. Um, um, light speed. I appreciate uh, um, at the Kisti conference, Light Speed was actually had a booth. That was uh, that was set up, and um, it had you know their major players there. We had uh, Rob McCartney there, Rob Chambers, very senior folks there, and uh, we're listening over two days. I sat down with them, and you may have seen me just sitting down with them and and discussing with them the uh, the, the events of that day. Um, so, Phil, I'm going to um, turn this part part over to you. I know we have uh, you know when I sat down, Rob McCartney gave me a great explanation. Uh, that's said, man, that'd be great if we had that in a little short clip form that I could share with an audience like this. And I believe that's been done. So, Phil, I'll turn it over to you. Well, we've been working with, with Light Speed for a, uh, a, mo a month or so and trying to figure out what the issue is with uh, between Light Speed and in Infinite Campus. And there's some other applications that have the same same issue. So, Light Speed has been a great partner. And uh, with their transparency, you know, we know almost everything that's going on from from almost changing every bit in the code. So uh, wanted to bring uh, I, I really couldn't do a good job at, at telling you what Rob can tell you. So we're going to bring Rob on virtually this morning. Uh, actually, it's a virtual recording so that we got yesterday. But it's I think the same thing that David uh, listened to and got and got from uh, from last speed uh, at the Kisti conference. So. Andy or, or Megan, you want to cue that up and get us going? Thanks. Hello, this is Rob McCartney, Customer Success Engineering Managers with Lightspeed Systems. First, I just want to thank everybody who stopped by the booth at KISTI and spoke with us. It was really great to put faces with all the names that I've been working so closely with over the last couple of years. What I wanted to, to talk to you about today and give you an update is, is what's going on with Lightspeed and Infinite Campus. Um, we were lucky enough a few weeks ago to be able to go on site to work with one of the uh, districts within Kentucky to really start to dig in and learn more about the Infinite Campus issues. Um, and we did this on site because the issue sometimes is so difficult to reproduce. Uh, that we thought being on site would really help us be able to grab the logs in, in real time that we needed to be able to figure out what's going on. And luckily that proved to be absolutely correct. Um, we do now know what is causing the issue with Infinite Campus and as well as a couple of other products some of our other customers are seeing. So what I want to take a second just to explain what the issue is and then what the next steps are from us on our end. Uh, the issue seems to be or is that when a user is logged into Infinite Campus and using it, at random times, Infinite Campus is sending an unsolicited request from uh, their servers back to the browser. 
The reason why knowing that this is an unsolicited request is because when that request comes back through to the machine and hits the proxy service, the proxy service really isn't sure what to do or hand, how to handle that because the request was never made from the device. So when that request is coming in, it actually in any Chromium browser, so Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, um, are both Chromium browsers, when that request is hitting the device, it goes into a pending status in the browser. What's important to know is that the browser, whether again, it's Edge or Chrome, when six or when more than six of these requests go into a pending state, that is when the browser then fails and infinite campus shuts down. Um, and we and we see that failure with infinite campus. You know, if it stops responding, uh, you have to close the browser and reopen the browser, um, which flushes out all of those pending requests and allow them to start stacking back up. Us discovering this really helped us identify how truly random this is. There's not some common process that triggers these unsolicited responses back from Infinite Campus. And we're actually seeing it uh, in a couple other products. One in particular that comes to mind is Ed Connect is doing the same thing. Now we've reached out to uh, both of those vendors to try to understand exactly what the purpose of these requests are, um, but we're and but we want to keep moving forward, not having to depend on them to tell us what it is, because it's very important that the the product works with all of these other pieces. Now in our testing at Warren County, where we were. Um, on site, what we learned was in an older model, um, probably would have been Smart Agent version 154, uh, when that logic was on the device, um, we looked at every request that came in through the proxy service uh, and ran it through the SSL decryption list. Uh, so that means unsolicited or solicited responses coming back. We would run through the list to see if what that domain that was making that request uh, was in the list. And if so, then we just said, okay, let that traffic go. But to try to make sure that the agents perform at an optimal level, some additional lo logic was put into later versions. So anything past 154. And what that does is it allows the agent to be smarter and know that, hey, I already know, let's say infinitecampus.org is in this list. I'm not going to recheck it to check and see if it's on the list, I'm just going to go ahead and allow it to go through. And that seems to be part of what is causing this failure is that logic, even though it's rechecking because it's an unsolicited request, it then moves into that pending state. Um, so that is what we learned from being on site. The next couple of steps we made is we did make a new smart agent version, version 1.10.1. Um, and while we were getting ready for KISTI, um, we were testing that in both Warren and, and Letcher County. Unfortunately, the testing did not prove to be positive. The infinite campus issue did return. Um, so what we're doing now is we have, as of Monday, March 14th, we have a new smart agent um, that has even better debugging mode uh, on it so that our developers can actually see we're in the driver, which is what's causing the issue with the proxy service, is the hiccup act. Um, and so we will be working again with a couple of districts to put this on to get uh, additional testing to figure out exactly where that, that, that issue is coming from and will allow us then to 
improve the code and the logic so that it doesn't happen again. Obviously, once we have a new build to test again, a, a build with the fix in it, we will engage with a couple of districts. We will get them testing on it as long as positive feedback is coming from those power users of Infinite Campus that they're not saying freezing, they're not saying crashing, anything like that. We will then expand statewide, making that available to all of the districts at any one time um, and, and get that in your hands. Um, I do want to also say that as we're working on that, we are also a step closer closer to the new 2.0 agent, or what I've been referring to as the next generation, which is that extens extension-based browsing. Um, and the reason why I bring this up is, is not to shy away from the advancements and the progress that we're making on resolving these infinite campus issues, um, but to know that the whole issue that we're seeing with Infinite Campus or, or Ed Connect, um, since it's a very similar issue, is because we have that local proxy service on the device and it's, and it's filtering everything. When we get to the next generation agents, any traffic that will be going through a web browser, so that be Safari, Edge, Chrome, Firefox, when we install that next generation, it will be filtered through an extension that is in the browser manually loaded from the install. What that means is very similar to how your Chromebooks are filtered today is how those devices will become filtered. The proxy service will still reside on the device. And the whole point of us still putting that there is to give you that enhanced protection. So in case a student tries to load a VPN product or tries to install something like Spotify or, or anything else that you that would not be going through a browser so that we're, be, we're able to go ahead and start filtering that as well. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, today being the 14th, that um, tomorrow we'll be able to start doing some more of that testing with the debug agents. Um, we'll be able to, to review some of that code. Our dev team then will probably need another day or two to come up with a new build with the resolution and then probably a couple of days for testing. So hopefully by either Friday or Monday, uh, we'll be able to have a better answer and be a lot closer to a permanent resolution for the infinite campus issues. Uh, if anyone has any questions about this, I do encourage them to reach out. I'm always here to help you. Uh, Rob Chambers is as well. Uh, many of you met him and, and uh, uh, have his contact information as well. So if there's anything we can do, please let us know. And again, thank you. We, we so much value the partnership between all of the districts there. Um, and the Commonwealth in, in general, and I look forward to our continued work together. Thanks. Well, thanks, Rob, and thanks, uh, Megan, for queuing that up for us and getting getting it going. Um, and I do appreciate Lightspeed. I, I appreciate their. Phil, Phil, you're on mute. Phil, you you muted yourself. <laughs> you don't always get the transparency from uh, from uh, from the vendor uh, community, so we appreciate that uh, transparency in our partnership. Thanks. And it was good sitting down talking with both of them. So the part that, um, uh, as I've talked about before, I'm big on in, in this world. He wants to spend time around me. Is it 99% broke for 99% or 1% broke for 1%? Gain the true magnitude of the problem is really important. And not you ignore if it's just a 1%, but it helps you really get a feel for it. So the first time in our fault determination, especially when you have an enterprise of this size, I try to see how broke something is or is not. Um, and then we start working on specifically what is it, it it's broken versus, uh, I would say, the sky is falling uh, type of thing. And then when it's a 1% of a 1% uh, issue or 1%. Not, and you, for this one, one percent, right? It's people trying to do things with a campus. Um, 
typically is, is uh, I don't remember Rob saying this in there, but I sat down, it's when they're doing not everything at empty camp, it's certain things. That's why we call them power users. It's like they're with the IEPs in infinite campus, uh, special education IEPs, it tends to do it. There was one more thing I think Rob talked about. I want to say it's almost registration. Um, there was two things that they found in, in commonality. Um, I don't remember him mentioning there when I sat down and talked to him. So in sitting with Rob, the two Robs, um, Chambers and, and McCartney, is um, the good news is 75% of our uh, over 1 million computers are Chromebooks, and this does not affect the Chromebooks. Another around 6% are iPads with the iOS. This does not f affect them. Um, we have 16% of our base that are Windows and 2% that are Mac OS. Um, it does affect them, uh, but not all of them. Um, it's many of those that are doing those power things, and uh, they mentioned something pretty in, in specific about which browser. You know, it's the Edge and, and Chrome browser. The Firefox, Safari, the IE browsers work. Uh, now, anyone knows me around, I, I, I do not like when someone says, well, you just use this other browser, it fixes it, and I know some of you are in that category. But it's a, ten it's a very temporary, you can, you can see we're on the path uh, of addressing it. If you have someone that's in a really bad spot, then you know those other browsers will, would work. Uh, but it's our intention to fix the Edge and Chrome. The other thing that was important to me when I talked with the, those two gentlemen um, at their booth is, um, you know, we don't know a specific reason that um, the, the Infinite Campus software is sending that uh, unsolicited request. We're assuming it's something really important to make that that service work. So the good news is uh, because uh, there's another software that it's impacting Ed Connect, there's nothing that we have to go to with IC to try to get all their programmers together and say, can you fix something there in IC to stop it from doing it to this? So, um, you know, Rob Chambers and McCarty said, this is ours, ours being light speeds to solve, uh, which I thought was a good thing. And they took ownership of it. They were there at the front line. So anybody that uh, was fussing, and they actually found it was pretty constructive. And also, they found I know Rob talked about it. Uh, and this one plus thing about coming to Kisti and coming to those booths and talking to those folks that are right there is Rob was able to fix some things that the district was running into. There was a parameter that wasn't set correctly, and he was able to real time uh, help the district fix that and address that. So I appreciate the Lightspeed team um, uh, joining us and and stepping up, and that's what you hope with, with an event like that, is if there's issues, your frontline uh, folks come and uh, address it and take the heat. And uh, and uh, we have some that don't, but definitely Lightspeed uh, that did that. So any other comments, and I haven't seen um, anything and, and uh, go soapbox there that uh, need to address there. So Phil, thanks, and we'll be watching for any other things you want to circle back to. Positive. Marty, Marty, I want to give you some time for STLP update you and Jeff just a quick as we're as we're getting ready to do our next big event beyond Kisty. so let's move to that awesome David and and here is that that coin that you mentioned yeah. as a um, or that metal um, yeah. that you mentioned that has a, a simple design on it so this is a, a great um, opportunity and actually a perfect fit with the previous conversation because the, the one thing we want to point out in terms of um, our students and teachers using the technologies that we put in front of them is that we we know that when folks feel confident and comfortable and safe and secure, the more usability we have, the more use we have, the usage and adoption increases. The 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 opposite end of that spectrum is when um, folks do not have that feel and there's fear placed uh, in, you know, so if, if we don't have good cybersecurity practices, and that's why that security conversation is extremely important to us, because we know that we can slide that scale uh, to more um, usage by our students and, and teachers, uh, and especially in the learning phase, which gets us to um, this awesome opportunity uh, to, to talk a little bit more about the STLP State Championship. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff. Before I do, thank you so much to those who you who gave feedback um, on the Go Soapbox question that we had, which is that our state championship is obviously right around the corner. We're getting um, geared up for it. Um, and have you already started advocating and removing the barriers? Because um, we know there are more barriers this year uh, than previous to the pandemic. And so 
um, getting those barriers removed, such as um, getting buses lined up and subs lined up and things like that to get your students to Rupp Arena. So 73% of you who responded um, said, yes, you're absolutely already working on that. And then another 27 said you're starting on it now. Now, we didn't have a question of uh, an answer of no. So <laughs> that, was, that was awesome for those of you who, who responded. Uh, Jeff, take us through, um, get, line it up. We know that registration is currently available, um, which is, so you're already seeing that activity, but take us through where we are all the way through the state championship. Yeah, awesome. So thanks. So can you can you see my screen? I went ahead and, yeah, and we shared do. that. We do. Fantastic. So uh, obviously we got a lot of stuff going on. It's big time. Um, my goal today is to just kind of uh, get you a little uh, hyped up for what we've got coming. We've got some great things happening. I am building on this excitement uh, because it, it kind of came at me last week when we were at KISTI and I had a chance to see a lot of you. Here's a, a picture of our STLP engineers who worked super hard last week. Thanks to everyone who helped get them there, uh, the KISTI board and folks who helped support them. But, you know, for the first time in you know almost two years, we got to see STLP students back in action in person. And it was it was great. Um, it was energizing. Uh, they had a spectacular time. Big thanks to Jim Seward, uh, who is our sort of STLP leader slash mentor for our engineer program. Great job. But what we're trying to get at when we um, think about the STLP state championship is, you know, that feeling you had last week when you got to KISTI and you started like seeing folks and you got that little energy and it was like, man, what's this is kind of fun. This is great to get back together with people and that excitement around learning new things and reconnecting with people. Our goal with the state championship is to give that same feeling, that same excitement back to our students, back to our STLP coaches who have been working hard for the last couple of years and all this year uh, for a lot of virtual experiences. And now we want to make sure that when they come back together, go through that effort to get to Rupp Arena in Lexington on Mar on April 20th, we want to make sure that it's going to be absolutely uh, just the best possible experience for them. So let me give you a quick status update. Here's where I am as of today. We're not too bad. From a planning perspective, I'm at about six coffee pods by <laughs> noon. It's not too bad yet. We'll expect to double or possibly triple this in the next coming four <laughs> weeks or so. Um, but I'm okay. See, I'm I can hold my hand pretty steady. We're looking pretty good. There's a lot happening. Uh, there's been a lot that has been happening to get us to this point. I want to give you a couple of quick updates about uh, where we're going to be, what's going to be happening, because your support for this is key. Helping folks get the hurdles out of the way to make sure that they can get their students here, uh, get the buses, get the planning, get everything in place to get folks here. We know that it's a challenge. We know that coming to Lexington for the event is tough. Uh, anyway, we know that during these times, it's even tougher. So we are really, really counting on you to lean in and help us fill RUP. Uh, we can do it. Um, where we're at right now, super fast. Obviously, there's been a lot of construction happening uh, at the site. There's a lot of things happening. Uh, we're, we're, we're excited. We're going to have access to about, I don't know, 95% of the entire facility. So uh, I don't love spending a lot of time talking about facility because we're talking about kids, but it's important, I think, for you to see uh, what we're bringing to the table to help make this year a little more special. Um, you've been with us before at state championship. It's super fantastic to walk into to Rupp Arena and you have that feeling of walking into uh, a big, you know, open arena and stadium and it's exciting. But this new facility also is lending itself to how important STLP state championship is for what we've been doing all year long. Here's some of the spaces that we're going to fill. Um, Tons of growth, tons of opportunity. If you can remember, uh, you know, just a couple years ago, 19, 2019, uh, when we had our last together state championship, we were so packed that we were overflowing into the hallways. We were setting up curtain rooms to have challenges in. 
Uh, we will maybe get back to that one point, but for now, I think we have a facility that is actually going to be able to manage the massive uh, massiveness of the STLP state championship and give us an opportunity to come together and celebrate. Now, the picture you're seeing here is sort of a rendering. Here's what we're we're kind of shooting for. This isn't obviously uh, our state championship event, but we want everyone to come together and help us celebrate our award shows. We actually have two award shows throughout the day. Uh, the floor of RUP will be packed and jamming all day long so that we can Give recognition to all the hard work that your students have been doing, your STLP coaches have been doing, your digital learning coaches, your computer science teachers, and your library media specialists. Everyone who's been helping support STLP through the year, we're going to make it awesome and a special day. Some things to highlight, we do have some new categories this year that we're excited about that folks can jump into. As always, you know, you can have about, there's four ways to come to the STLP state championship. The first way is as a level two project. We did regionals back in December and had opportunities for all of those groups to um, submit, participate, and then find their spot moving from level one there at regionals to level two at state. So that's the first way to get there. The second way to get there is you might come and participate in the you know, 20 plus different on-site live challenges that day. Uh, there's no pre-qualification. You sign up during the reg on the registration form, your students show up and they'll hit some challenges. If you're not familiar with those, imagine a coding challenge. Imagine a web design challenge where you walk into a room, BYOD, bring your own device, you get a prompt and you've got two or three hours to create a web design to solve something through coding. Uh, the best design wins. Uh, we celebrate that throughout the day. The third way to come is just to come. Come hang out. Check out all the things that are happening. We have the STLP experience, which we used to call the STP playground. We've got lots of uh, hands-on demonstrations, activities, um, things for kids to get involved in. Plus, you can see all of the great things that have been happening with the STLPs um, around the state to get you pumped up for the next way. And the fourth way is to come. You might be a digital product semifinalist. A lot of folks submitted digital product, DPOJ stuff, digital art, digital music. You're going to find out if you're semifinalist. If you're a semifinalist, you might be called up on stage to win an award. You could be a state champion. So with those four ways, we want you to come. We want you to check it out. Some of the new things we're super excited about, Warren County leading a line follow challenge, a new robotics challenge for us. Uh, of course, we've got Rhonda's leading our STLP Tech Bowl. Uh, brand new Robo Challenge Extreme is back. Serta Palooza is coming back. Makerspace, Robot World, there's so many things happening. We want to get together to celebrate how your students and your teachers are using the technology that you provide. You were just asking the question a minute ago, you know, is our status changed? Are people, you know, still, you know, giving us a hard time? And okay, here's how you get them to not give you a hard time. Get your administrators, get your teachers, get your students to the STLP State Championship. Let them see students using technology demonstrating learning, and we know from experience, you've seen it too, if you've been there, you know, everyone that comes for the first time walks away going, this is amazing. I can't believe this is what our students are doing. Take advantage of that as a CIO, as a DTC. This is a playground for you to bring people to say, see, I told you, this is what we do and it's pretty important, okay? Use this as an opportunity, but also, Give this opportunity back to students. Register by March 27th to let us know that you're coming so that we can organize things even more strongly. There's the website. Visit that. It'll get you to the STLP state info page, which will give you details, schedules, ideas about where buses will go, when to get there. We'll flesh that out as we get closer to March 27th and know a little bit more about where everything will be. But don't miss out on this opportunity. Give these kids that surprise and delight that we got to experience at KISTE last week. Um, let's get back into the swing of things and let's just fill her up. Thanks, Jeff. I know the Kentucky Valley Educational Cooperative, that's in Eastern Kentucky, K-12, is having uh, for the first time their board meeting that day. Yeah. Um, so if you're, you're, your district is part of that, I encourage your superintendent to go that in person because they'll do just what Jeff said. We're walking that talk too. This is our third attempt to get our Kentucky Board of Education there. They were going to do it, you know, the previous two times, but because the pandemic, it was, uh, was stopped. So third time's a charm. So we're having our own Kentucky Board of Education uh, 
be there during it and actually uh, uh, move around and, and see the what's what's there during during the uh, state championship. So thanks, Jeff, for all you're doing there. And I'll, I'll, I'll my my uh, youngest son Logan will be pleased that he made our webcast picture. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, that, that was great. <laughs> Uh, Mike, uh, to, to close it out, uh, I know this is uh, was, was in um, uh, your, your Kets Corner notes, but I know that uh, there's an announcement about E-rate, uh, a closing date that we just want to make sure we're getting close to that, that we wanted to mention. So Yeah, I'll uh, mention uh, just a few dates here real quick, and they all were in, as you say, my Kets Corner communication for March. Um, Kets offers, second Kets offers will be going out within the next week, so everybody look for that and uh Expect to receive those notifications. E-rate closing window filing for the upcoming uh, year is March 22nd, so that's just in a few days. So hopefully you've done all the uh, the activities that you needed to do to be prepared to complete your applications. If you need any ad additional assistance at this time, be sure to let your KE know, and we'll ensure that we provide you with the guidance or assistance you need to get that completed uh, successfully. Uh, national or uh, the notice of proposed rulemaking. I just want a quick reminder. Initial comments on that, and this is for the E rate program. Uh, I've had this in a couple of communications. Uh, the initial comments March uh, due by March 28th. The uh, responses to those uh, initial uh, 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 comments is April 27th. We will be providing some kind of a state response to that. Um, so if you've got anything you'd just like for us to consider, be sure to get that to your KE, and they'll ensure that we've got that. Uh, technology planning due date April 15th again just a reminder and then the uh, uh, I just want to make a quick comment on you know one of our summit topics was our next generation K-12 through internet that's going to be uh, a lot of activity for us we'll be pulling in additional comments feedback in addition to what we got in, during the summit so that we can complete that activity over the next several months uh, with the expectation of awarding our new contract that we'll be working under for that by January of 2023. Um, so again, just a reminder on all those dates. And I think that's all I really need to mention, David. Thanks. I know Jeff and Aaron just posted some things about STLP about judging and, and registration. So, so thanks. Uh, thanks for that update. Well, thanks for joining us today. I'll be, um, Hanging out a little bit uh, uh, long, a little bit after the web after this ends uh, officially ends. Um, um, today is officially Taco Tuesday. I'm not uh, Marty and Jeff. I'm not trying to do a Taco Tuesday on Monday like I did last week. So it really is legit this time um, uh, downstairs. So thanks for those that joined us today. Once again, just as a reminder, all the discussion about cybersecurity, uh, those will all be removed, uh, and when we post this. Uh, uh, a copy of this webcast later time, and thank you for your feedback and your attendance today. Take care.